Thousands of U.S. troops are still pouring into the region, and the Navy is under orders to intercept all ships to and from Iraq and Kuwait. In addition, there is word now from Saudi Arabia that another Iraqi tanker has been turned away empty from a Red Sea port, evidence the embargo against Iraq is holding. At the center of the issue is the interpretation of abortion laws. Just who's entitled to an abortion and under what conditions? And depending on who you talk to, the answers are quite different. News 12's Roma Tori is standing by in the village of Bellport with more on the story for us. Roma? Right, Scott and Melba, residents here are genuinely frightened and they point to a host of medical problems plaguing this tiny community of 46 homes, problems ranging from chronic headaches to cancer. Now, they also believe they know the source of their problem, a former laundry nearby that they believe is alleged to have used the site as a toxic dumping ground. They have plenty of questions, but more than answers, the residents are just demanding that someone clean up their water. The Smithtown School District is essentially on austerity. That means unless there's a revote by September, the kids are going to have to do without a lot of things, including transportation and sports. And it is the sports issue that's got many of them worked up because they've discovered on austerity, if they want to play, they're going to have to pay. Six months from now, the planners will present their report to the village's four trustees, at which time they will decide the fate of this old school building. Meantime, advocates for AIDS care fear they're going to have to find someone else's backyard to build their AIDS home. In West Hampton Beach, I'm Roma Torrey, News 12, Long Island. All of this effort comes with a price tag, and though no one knows exactly how much, some say it's a steep one. State and federal governments have imposed strict mandates on school curricula. It is now a law that all New York schools must include courses on drug and alcohol abuse, as well as AIDS. But the complaint is the state isn't putting its money where its mandates are. This is Conklin Hall, where all three of Christina's classes are held. As you can see, there are four steps here and six more inside. No problem for most students, but for Christina, there might as well be a moat. Now, granted, you may not be able to tell the difference between the earth tomato plants and the space tomato plants, but consider this. The space seeds were exposed to six years in the vacuum of space, weightlessness, extreme temperatures, and cosmic radiation. These are not normal plants. Boys Next Door is an interesting study of people we know too little about and should get to know better. But because it lacks a strong plot, you may find the tedium of their lives becomes a bit too real. Nothing really happens next door, but that shouldn't keep you from visiting. I'm Roma Torrey, and that's a wrap. Well, they're known for high-speed action on the screen, but soon they'll be involved in some high-speed action on the high seas. Don Johnson, Chuck Norris, and Kurt Russell are just a few of the names involved in a powerboat race. It's taking place on the Hudson River this Saturday. I don't have a baby anymore. I don't have a baby. I don't have a baby anymore. Teresa and George Bostick's only child together, eight-and-a-half-month-old Nigel Montgomery, suffocated to death in his hospital room. It happened just as the hospital was preparing to release the baby to go home. Back in September, Nigel was taken to Stony Brook Hospital and diagnosed with croup. He was sent home four days later, but his parents say his condition failed to improve. They were referred by their pediatrician to Dr. Robert Rubin at Montefiore Hospital in the Bronx. He's considered one of the best in the country. Rubin operated to enlarge the child's windpipe and later inserted a trach tube in the baby's throat. It was all considered routine. He said, it's fine. He said, it's fine as long as the trach stays in. But if the trach comes out, there's a possibility of asphyxiation. But then Monday evening, the hospital called. He said, uh, are you Mr. Bostic? And I said, yes. He said, we came, we found your baby in his, in his bed with his trach out, and he was turning blue, and we're working on it now, and now we give him oxygen. He's very, very sick. If you can come down, if you can come down, come down. Both parents say the tube was fastened tightly to the baby's throat, and there was no way the child could have loosened the tube himself. His trach was out. He was blue. They found him in the bed, and he was blue with his trach out. And then he would never <laughs> let you touch his trach. He'd fight your hands. So somebody had to go in there. I don't know. I don't like to accuse, but it's too obvious that something's wrong. Their pediatrician and Dr. Rubin apparently agreed. I spoke okay. to Dr. Rubin several times today. And uh, I asked him point blank, could the baby have done this? And it was Dr. Rubin's opinion that the baby could not have pulled the trach out it himself. The Vostics say they're awaiting the results of two separate investigations, one by the hospital, the other from the police. They say they'll decide then whether or not to take any legal action. 
Meanwhile, little Nigel Bostick, a baby his parents say was so full of life, will be buried in Medford. I'm Roma Torre, News 12, Long Island. We had a fire in that basement. The basement could either uh, fully involve the school, blow the school up, and if there were any children in there, I think they would be in danger throughout the whole thing. Inspector Paul Casella from the fire marshal's office says the Hempstead schools are Nassau County's worst in terms of fire prevention safety. More than 60 violations remain outstanding. When we arrived at the middle school for a surprise inspection, we found gasoline cans and flammable chemicals improperly stored. There was only one exit. Fire extinguishers expired for years and a situation where exhaust fumes leak into the schoolrooms. It goes up there and they can't breathe either. They can't breathe because they're smelling the right, exhaust fumes. Right, goes straight up and they complained about it. That's why they made the home economics, the teacher's lounge. And then they put the home economics on the other side of the building. So what's directly above here? You have classrooms. So the kids are smelling it. Right now, yeah. This room contains pipes covered with friable asbestos, a serious health hazard in a place where workers are constantly moving in and out. Like I was told to take all the asbestos off the pipes, all the asbestos covering. You did it which yourself. I did it myself, but at the time I didn't know I, I could refuse to do it. And they couldn't do anything, but I didn't know at the time. Did you wear protective clothing? Just the coveralls that I had, you know, and I had uh, a hat. Maintenance workers say it's been like this for more than 20 years, and they're angry it's taken so long to correct. We've been promised over the years, you know, that we've had renovations taken care of down here. But nothing's ever happened. But the problems don't end here. Inside the middle school, we tested the fire alarms. Nothing's working. No, and I say now I got Oh, there it goes. Where? The alarms sound in only one part of the building. In case of a fire, half the building would never hear a thing. If you had children in that middle school, what would you be doing right now? I'd be very worried and I'd take them out of that middle school and put them someplace else. In Hempstead, I'm Roma Torrey, News 12, Long Island. From the looks of it, this is an ordinary graduation. There are the graduates, the proud parents, and of course, the commencement speech. We congratulate you, and we say God bless you, and keep up your hard work. But what you see going on here is actually something very special. This is the Little Village School in Garden City for developmentally disabled children. It's a place that can make dreams come true. It's hard for me because we've been here for a long time and uh, the school's done a lot for him. I was never able to communicate with him. And now just seeing him, that he's singing and talking and, and he's excited about going on to another school. And it's also sad to say goodbye to some special people here. The lessons these children have learned may seem basic, but for many of them who could barely walk or talk when they arrived here, their graduation is something of a miracle. It carried him in as a little baby with a lot of hope, and he's proved that miracles can really come true. Very proud, very proud, very sad also to leave the school. A lot of good people were leaving behind, but I'll never forget what they did for my son. Emotions ran deep in this room where parents and their children had to say their final goodbyes. Some children spent as much as 10 years here. For their families, the experience was worth a lifetime. What do you want to do when you grow up? Be a teacher. Garden City, Roma Torrey, News 12, Long Island.